Yeah, coming back Karen to the pause, was, what, what did you young, admire most about Karen? Karen was very smart, very musically inclined. Um, always had something on the go. Uh, she was well loved at school. Um, all her students loved her and talked about her and couldn't wait to get in her class. She always did all the musicals at school. She did a lot of music with the church. And uh, it was just a musical tradition that she carried on from her family. Mm -hmm. Most of the family was musically inclined. Mm. Same question, what do you admire most about Rose? Party girl. Party girl? Yeah, she was a, she was a good home, homekeeper too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was a very nice girl. So when you say she's a party girl, what does that mean? Well, she liked to go out and have a few drinks. Mm -hmm. Your mom didn't because she gets migraines. And mm. Didn't like the fire scene as much as Rose did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Moving right along. Moving right along. Uh, what do you What do you admire most about Jen? She's very easy going. She'll go anywhere, anytime. She'll go to war. She'll go traveling. <coughs> um, not big on sightseeing. Mm. No, she'll see it. Well, okay, yeah, let's go. Like if you're traveling around, doesn't want to see the big sights or whatever. Okay. She's She's fascinated with churches. Oh. And doors, old doors on mm -hmm. different buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she loves churches. <laughs> not going okay. in them, we're not going to them, but seeing them from the outside and inside. The cathedral inside, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you been to the Vatican before? Have you been to Rome? Have you been to Rome? No, no, She's she has. Oh. She has. Yeah. yeah. If you ever want a sight to see, inside the Vatican is, I would say, the coolest building I've ever seen inside. Well, I should with all those Catholics giving them money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, here's a question for you. What do you believe is the key to a successful marriage? Uh, openness, kindness, treat each other as you want to be treated. Um, not have a short temper like myself. Not be quick, uh, quick to open your mouth and put your foot in it. Um, just enjoying being with each other, which I always did. I didn't. <laughs> what do you think, Mickey? Uh, sure. How did you find out that you were going to be a parent for the first time? Well, when your mom's tummy started bulging, thought she was putting on weight, but actually she wasn't. She was carrying you. Really? No. No. What was my reaction? What was How did you find out? What? What? I think she came home and told me that she'd been to the doctor and that, you know, she'd missed her uh, menstrual cycle. And came home and told you? You were in there. At least we thought you was in there. <laughs> she came home from the hospital right right away? Did you think she was at school? Did you think the doctors? She went to fur checkup. So you, she didn't have a an idea first and then went and checked? She yeah, just, she did. She oh, did. Yeah. Uh, most women have an inkling when they're going to have birth, mm -hmm. give birth. Mm -hmm. Were you, you nervous, excited, upset? Excited. All the, all the above? No, I wasn't. As, no, no, we planned you guys. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys didn't just have to come along. We waited five years until we had any kids. Yeah. yeah, I was 25 when you were born. I got married at 18. Yeah. 18, 19. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, no, we planned you guys. No, I was excited. I actually showed your mom how to look after a baby more so than what she knew because I had just come from home and Jeff had just, <coughs> he was a fairly new, new, uh, newborn. Mm -hmm. So I was raised with, you know, mom always bringing home babies and stuff. And so it was nothing for me to change babies and do this and do that for them and feed them. And I actually, I actually babysat you guys the first few years and work shift work. And then we, when I, when your mom come home from work, I'd go to bed. And often I'd lay down with you guys at, uh, you know, if I work at nights, and I'd lay down and have a nap with you. Except I'd stay sleeping, and you guys would be up. <laughs> and, the, and the cleaning lady would be looking after you. Oh really? Remember Tina? No, I don't remember Tina. Tina Van Lee. No. Yeah, she was. She was always looking at you guys when I was sound asleep. Uh, yeah. yeah. Tina. Because I was just so tired from working the night shift. Yeah. yeah. I remember Joan. 
Wait, I'm John from the church. Was she from church? Yeah. Who was she? Yeah. Okay. Porter. Joe Porter? Mm-hmm. Okay. Her husband was in the porn big time. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And there was a... Uh, Susie Kowski. was one of Mom's... She's, she's stupid. Baby sad for us sometimes. Baby sad, okay. Yep. Um, then why did you choose Vanessa in my name? You were supposed to be called um, I can help you with this. What is it? Joshua. Yeah, you were supposed to be called Joshua. Mm-hmm. After Je- uh, uh, oh, Jeremiah. Joshua or Jeremiah. After the movie. Jeremiah Johnson with um, uh, what's it? Robert Redford. Huh. Hey, Jeremiah Johnson, he was a big bear bear trapper up in the Arctic. Uh-huh. But last minute, I changed your mom's mind, mind to let me have my way and call you Tom after <coughs> me. <coughs> At the very last minute. <laughs> and there's an interesting story about that, right? In the, when I was being born, all the names of people in there. Do you know that story? Do you remember that story? No. Wasn't it that my name was Tom, your name was Tom, doctor's name was the Tom. doctor's name was Tom? Wasn't the nurse's name Thomasina? Yeah, could be. I think so. I think Mom was the only one that was yeah. named Karen. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then where'd Vanessa come from? Don't know. Really? No, just her middle name after your mom. Was that name. yours or Mum's idea to come up with Vanessa? I don't know. Yeah, I think it was your mom's. Yeah. Must be biblical or something. I don't think so. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what was your proudest moment as a parent? Pause. We haven't had one yet. No. <laughs> there was a lot. Okay. I think the one that sticks out in my mind the most, I guess, was when you graduated from OCAV. Okay. Your mom and I came up. Yeah. Graduation. I don't think we were together then. I don't think. Uh, I don't. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you were always winning different things at school and stuff like that. Yeah. You were good at soccer, really good at soccer. Mm-hmm. Art. You were really good at art. Mm-hmm. Um, I still have one of your. Remember the star you made for me that you had to describe yourself in school and playful, yeah. helpful, smart, and you had to put one of the one of your attributes in each of the um, these uh, star fingers. Mm-hmm. I still have it hanging in my office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play. I like the one playful, playful. <laughs> smart. <laughs> How about with Desi? <laughs> Desi, my little ballerina. Uh-huh. Yeah. Ballerina, gymnastics, you guys were in. Um, let's see. Uh, she was always, uh, she was always a, a favorite with friends. She had a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. Still does. Yeah, she's. Uh, I guess I'm more proud of her now than I was when she was smaller because I, I think she's come. She's a super mom. Mm-hmm. Super mom. Yeah, she. Really looks after her kids. Don't cross her with her kids. <laughs> yeah, no, can you, I'm can quite you think of her. one pinnacle moment where it was like, oh yeah, Vanessa used to love getting her dressed up for school, mm-hmm. doing her hair, getting her ready, with her dress or whatever. One pinnacle moment when I went out and bought her a beautiful pair of gray slacks because we were going to go and have our family photos taken. She put up the biggest fight. She didn't want to wear them. She did. Let me get a picture of her. <laughs> <Those> slacks on. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're proud of that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say I was proud of it. I, that was one of my. Just a moment. Uh, moment that I remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, she was uh, quite the girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She wasn't as good at school as you were. I had to keep enticing her with different things to keep her in school, like to go to college and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I think she was a lot like me. Yeah. You were a lot like your mother when it came to education. Yeah. Yeah. But no, she was, uh, I, I'm proud of both you guys. Yeah. I think you both turned out very, very well. I don't anticipate it. <laughs> so maybe go down my tra- trail. What did uh, what did your family enjoy doing most together? What uh, thinking about you, Mum, Ness, and me? What, what did we enjoy, or what was one of your favorite times? We went out for dinner a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, we went out to to different events, <coughs> uh, the theater. We took you guys to the theater like you're doing with your son now. Mm-hmm. Uh, did a little bit of traveling with you guys. I skied all the time with you guys, you and Ness. Your mom didn't participate in that. Um, but we would take you uh, to Florida. We all went to Florida. Remember? One year was uh, Florida, the next year was skiing. The next year was Florida, the next year was skiing. Mm-hmm. Got to the point where you said, oh, I don't want to go to Disney World anymore. Really? <laughs> or, no, Ness said that. Oh, you Ness. said because you still like to go, I'm like, even to I, this day. I said that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I said that. Yeah, no, <laughs> Ness said that. I don't want to go to Disney World anymore, Dad. Yeah, but you did. Yeah, but uh, you both enjoyed skiing. Yeah. Was there one time, uh, either skiing or at Disney World, that you're like, ah, oh, that was one of the best. One day, one moment, one. No, it was, no, it was all good. No, it was all good. I can't say there's one particular moment. There's one that sticks out of my mind. Which one? We, we were all down in the living seas. Mm-hmm. Down, and there was the school's in. Yes. No, school's in. I remember that. Oh, school's in. I remember that. <laughs> school's yeah, yeah. Like the big right. aquarium. Yeah, watching the, the fish had going a, by. Everybody had a view of the yeah. aquarium underground. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was fun. You guys were all going, school's in. <laughs> school's in. I think that was you. <laughs> that is you. School's in. School's there's a, there's the a crabby old teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that. Through the whole meal. Yeah. <laughs> Living Seas, wasn't it? Yeah. Living Seas. Probably still there. I'm sure it's called The Living Seas, brought to you by And I remember them telling us, I remember them telling us upstairs in the upper, upper chambers was this huge, like 30 or 40 or 50 foot table where heads of the state of uh, of the world used to come and meet secretly up there. Mm-hmm. I remember they told us that in the Cinderella Castle or where? At the no, Cinderella the Living Seas. Seas up at the very top level, oh. which nobody ever got to go up there. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. no, they were telling us that. Hmm. Okay. Schnext. Yeah, yeah. What, what what's here? we're at forty six? Hmm. So, what's your profession, and how did you choose it? I didn't. You didn't. No. Well. What do you do? Oh, I work for the St. Lawrence Seaway. Okay, how'd you start doing that? How'd I get there? Yeah. I was working for a place called Wilmot Industries in Welland. Okay. I was working with Herb Rasmussen, got me the job, because he was foreman in the pattern shop. Mm-hmm. Pattern shop is a, is a woodworking shop that they made wooden patterns out of, out of, and then they would make them split in half, and then they would press them into this silicone sand, and then unpress them, and they would pour uh, liquid um, iron, steel into them to make castings like for fire hydrants, sewer grates, things like that, coping for the seaway. And they all had to be numbered and tagged so we could library them to put them in the big warehouse. And so if you needed something, you'd look up the number and you'd say, okay, that's over there. I would put those stencils and, and catalog them and everything, and they were made out of metal, and then I would and I would paint them in different colors. Different colors meant different things. So I worked in there, and then a whole bunch of us got laid off from there, like uh, 150 of us. And the personnel manager from Walmart went to school with the personnel manager from the Seaway, and he called Bob Balcom at the Seaway and said, look, I got 150 guys laid out. Can you use them in the wintertime? He says, send them all down. He says, yeah, we could use 150 guys for winter works. So we all started at the Seaway, and come time to be called back to Wildman Industries in Welland, everybody went back except two guys, me and Jack LaValle. And Jack LaValle, a French fellow from Welland, um, he worked in the furnace room uh, 
in the foundry at Duwamit. And uh, so we both stayed, made a career with the Seaway. Everybody went back to Walmart because they were either from Welland, they had a lot of years in there, and their pension was there, and uh, they had security, so they thought. But later on down the road in the years, it closed. It's been demolished, and it's just an open field now. It's across from the Rex Hotel. Ooh, in Welland. Welland. Yeah, it's so, just a field. Yeah? So. so that's how I started on the Seaway, and I've been there ever since. Yeah. 45 years. How has that changed? Oh, big time. <clears throat> because? Well, when I started on Seaway, there used to be four linesmen on the lock and a lockmaster and an operator, so six guys per lock. Then we went down to five guys, then four guys, then three guys, and now we're down to one guy, and soon to me, no guys. There's one guy, myself, I operate those big suction cups that go on the boats now, and I just push buttons. Now they're going to take that job away and move it inside, so one fellow will do multiple locks. So there'll be nobody on the locks. So it's very, getting very close to retirement. Amazing, they can go from six guys per lock. What did, you, what did the six guys used to do? Well, four guys tied up the boat, yeah. one guy on each line, Lockmaster to spot the boat and oversee everybody, make sure everything was being done right. And then when that, that was all completed and the boat was secure, then the operator took over, closed the gates, and raised or lowered the boat. Then us four guys would let the boat go, whether it was going upbound or downbound. Lockmaster would just again oversee us, and then we all go and shack away for the next boat. Play cards, sleep. Play cards all the time. Used to wear hot ball hats before helmets. Used to measure stuff for uniforms, which they don't even do anymore. Um, yeah, things have really changed. You never moved from lock to lock if you were short men. Yeah, they always, everybody had a full crew all the time. Now we move from lock to lock because the short guys. Big change. So right. I'm four times older. <laughs> it's more difficult. Right, so I guess they don't hire 150 guys at once. In the wintertime, they don't hire anybody. No? Nope. I haven't hired anybody for years. No. They contract most of the things out. So, but you do something else. What else do you do? I do blinds. And how do you get into that? For windows. Mm -hmm. I got into that when we lived on Prince Edward Avenue, and the fellow that lived across the street had a blind business. And he was very good at sales, but he wasn't very good at installations. And I was good at installations, so I started doing installs <coughs> with him, and we were going to go into business together and move to... London, Ontario. Oh. And just before we did, he lost everything. His business wasn't doing as good as he said it was. He lost his cars. Their marriage broke up. What was his name? Lost his house. Steve. Steve and Heidi. Oh, yeah. Steve and Heidi. That, that was over where? On Prince Edward. Prince Edward. They were on the corner opposite, yeah. weren't they? They lost everything. They lost their house, their marriage, their cars, their business, everything. You know what happened to him? He went back to selling shoes, I think. Huh? So, you know, I thought, I got a little bit of business sense. I'm going to see if I can give this a go. I kind of like it. I get to deal with the public like I did when I worked for my father. And uh, so I started up and... Karen's mom and dad gave me a thousand dollars to start up. No, really? Mm hmm. Yeah, and that's when I had a little store on uh, Wilm Street. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It lasted a year, and then mom and dad died, and I closed, and then I reopened under just blinds. But it was called originally called the Blind Guys. Right. And then, but just blinds. You didn't open a storefront anymore. Didn't really need Operated one. from home. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really need one because I wasn't doing draperies anymore. And uh, I didn't need a store because I had to go to the people's home to measure anyway because money prices always include installation. Mm -hmm. So I would install everything. So I had to go there anyway. So I really didn't need a storefront, which was just another expense. Yeah. And for the draperies, you had somebody working for you, didn't you? Yeah, I had a couple of girls. Um, Shay? Barb Shea. Yeah. yeah. And some other girl, I forget her name now. And then why'd you stop doing draperies? Because it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. So, so 
thing to please women and you better hang them up in their they just so oh, can you fix that, can you fix this, that's not right, this isn't right, that's not the time. Uh, you know, I don't need this. Okay. So I just and just blanks. Pulled back and did did just blanks. Just blanks. Where'd you get the name of that then? Oh. <laughs> just made it up. Yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> if you could have had any other profession, what would you have been? I would have loved to have been a helicopter pilot. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like helicopters. Have you been to the helicopters down here? Many times. Yeah? I used to go um, when the Seaway had, uh, if the Seaway ever had, when I worked in the office, when the Seaway uh, ever had people come in that was doing a documentary and, and were going to go up in a helicopter, they would send me with them. Mm-hmm. So I got to go up numerous times. Oh, really? Yeah. And they would take the door off the side of the helicopter so they could put the big cameras out on the sides of the hay. And you know what to say? No. <laughs> no. But that's where I learned to like them. Yeah. Then I've been up a few times myself. Yeah. Sure. And uh, how come you never went for it? Because I was already working at Seaway, because I was married, because I had a family, because I had all kinds of excuses, because. I had home and I had commitments, financial and otherwise, and that just didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Of all the things you learned from your parents, which you feel that you value the most? That they taught me to be honest, sincere, thoughtful. Yeah, I got a bit the. Uh, uh, not a bad business, bit of a business sense of my father. Cooking from my mother. Yeah. What accomplishments are you most proud of? You. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if that's an accomplishment. I guess that's an accomplishment. That's an accomplishment. I stuck out one job and that was, um, I was, uh, I think I was a good father, a good provider. Um, I think that's quite an accomplishment. Mm-hmm. I didn't jump from job to job. I didn't lose my jobs or get fired from my jobs. Um, didn't get arrested too often. Uh, I don't know. I think I worked hard for what I have. Mm-hmm. don't have a whole lot, but I do in a lot of people's eyes. But I think I did pretty good for myself, but I think I wore myself out too. Mm-hmm. Doing too much manual labor. My legs, my arms, my heart. Mm-hmm. I think I just did too much mm-hmm. physical stuff, especially on the seaway. Yeah. My hip, my legs. The physical mm-hmm. stuff is is winding down a bit now, or no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's winding down. Yeah. And you have how many vehicles and how many things are you now? Coffee with? Tally it up, what do you think? What do you mean? Three, three cars. Three cars and a motorbike. Motorbike. Two little motorbikes. Don't those for the grandkids. Yeah, for grandkids. Have house here, house there. You have, <laughs> you have a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing okay now. Compared to, compared to most people in life. Not the 1%, but most Depends other people in life. You work. Yeah. Depends on where you put your priorities. Yeah. yeah. Depends on what you spend your money on. Yeah. Depends on what you want. <laughs> and then a lot of things. I mean, a lot of people squander their money and don't have anything throughout their life. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought I was. I thought I did pretty good with what I had. What's the one thing that you want most people to remember you by? Just playful, happy, most of the time. Um, I don't know. I was a good guy. I was fair. Fairly honest, not bad looking, um, committed, um, reliable. I think more than anything is I'm reliable. Uh, I think one of your questions there was, what would you? What was one of your? Where where, where are you? And what was well actually we're, we're on number fifty, but I've added two more questions. What was fifty? What, that was what was one thing that you want to be most. Rem- what, what is the one thing you want most people to remember you about you? Hmm. One thing I learned really early in life, and I forget who told me, that if you want to have something done, don't ask somebody that has a lot of free time. Hmm. 
the reason they have a lot of free time is because they're procrastinating usually. So you want to always ask somebody that's really busy because mm -hmm. they will make time for you and fit in uh, your request. So I remember that. And I forget who told me that. So if you ever want anything done, always ask somebody that's very busy to do it for you. Mm -hmm. so that, almost, that almost leads to my next question. If well, you had it a, does lead to it. If, yeah, if you had a, a, a piece of advice for Mickey, Mike, Carter, or Bryn, what would it be? That would be my advice. The other piece of advice I would give you is whenever you were invited to an event or someone's home, never walk in with empty hands. Always have something to bring in. Whether it's a bottle or some fruit or a little hors d'oeuvre or a card. Something. Don't go in empty handed. Mm -hmm. Oh, the last time on that. Yeah. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's the last fun one. Tomorrow, you're given a hundred million dollars. What are you gonna do? I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> out here? Where? What are you doing? I'm gone. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna travel like crazy. Buy lots of cars, houses. Hey, nope. Let's, let's think about where are you going to travel to. You, you, here's a hundred million dollars. Where are you going? The world. What, you're buying it around the world. Where are you going to first? Probably first we'll stop out at BC. BC? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to go to Vancouver? Do you want to go over to Whistler? Do you want to... Well, I want to go to, and we're going to do it this coming year. We're going to go to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Then we're, we're going to, because Jan has driven many times and lived in California. <clears throat> The road that goes along the coast. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hear that's beautiful. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then I want to go down to I think it's Ontario, California, mm -hmm. is the city where you pick up Route sixty six. Oh yeah. And then come back up through the states to Chicago is where where it ends or starts, depending on which way you're going. And I'd like to do that. I would have loved to have done that on my motorcycle, but I don't think that's possible. Mm -hmm. So you'd like to do that? So I'd like to drive that. Anywhere else? In the world? Well, let's hear. Where do you want to go next? Well, the rest of the world. You got You just want a hundred million. That's that's a uh, that's. Oh, I'd like to see. Maybe hitting ten thousand dollars. England, Paris. <laughs> Pop it over. Have you you're not been England? No, just the yeah. airport. Okay. I never left the airport. Yeah. So I'd look. like to see Africa. Where in Africa? North. Uh, South. Uh, I'd like to see South Tanzania. Africa. I'd like to see. Uh, like, I'd like to go back to Morocco. I really liked it there. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to go to Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to go to um, Prague. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you told me Prague. It's beautiful. Good. It's beautiful. Um, I'd like to see more of the states. I'd like to see more of Asia, China, <laughs> Amsterdam. <laughs> Amsterdam, yeah. yeah. Well, things are changing there as well. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go out east. I've never, I've never been further than Quebec City. No, me neither. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's nice there. Yeah. But I'd like to see Newfoundland and some of the eastern provinces. Nova Scotia, yeah. Yeah, so that's about it. Yeah. Well, what's, your, what's your big ticket item? What are you going to buy? $100 million. A few nice cars. What's the first one? Oh, my first one? Yeah. I always wanted a Bentley. Bentley. So I'd like to get a hard top and, <laughs> and the ones and with a the soft top. For the cigars and. Because huh? Bentleys have big uh, things that actually fit. They're made for cigars and oh, cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Yeah. No, I don't no. know why. I just love, love the look of a Bentley. Yeah. Yeah. Bentley. And where is your, uh, where's your home going to be? Your, another home going to be? I'd probably like to have a home in New York. Hmm? Maybe Toronto, maybe mm. Vancouver, mm -hmm. maybe Bangkok. Mm. Depends on if I'm single or with somebody. <laughs> it's tomorrow, so. Uh, well, it's tomorrow. <laughs> Probably Vancouver, yeah. New York, Toronto. Yeah. Someplace nice and warm, maybe one of the islands. Yeah. Jan would be good at picking out a spot because she just researches everything to death and gets the best of the best of the best when she chooses. Yeah. Yeah, she's very thorough like that. Yeah. So, am I getting paid for this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Okay, well, let's keep doing that. Okay. Okay. No, I think uh, we're done. We're done for now.
What do you mean for now? We're done for now. Well, then we're done. Unless you uh, come up with some of your own questions that you want to ask. No? Okay. Yeah, no, I think good. Thanks for taking the time. No problem. Love you. <laughs> I love you too.